Hello and welcome to another episode of Wedflix. I'm Julia Brame, I'm your host and the editor and founder of Brides at North, the top UK wedding blog for Northern couples and I'm the editor of the go-to bridal fashion glossy Unveiled magazine. Today on the show I am proud to welcome a lady far more talented than myself. It is the incredible Stephanie of Stephanie Harpist. Now Stephanie brings a really special element to your wedding day. Her music is, oh, it's incredible. And she has got the finest training and the very, very best repertoire. Without further ado, let's introduce her and find out about how she can make musical magic on your big day. Okay, so hi, Stephanie. Welcome Hello. to the Wedflix show. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, really good. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you very much. Keeping on. So Stephanie is um, Stephanie Halsey, but her business name, her alter ego is Stephanie <laughs> Harpist. <laughs> and she is a musical superhero. So she's here to talk to us today all about her, all about her um, professional background and how she can bring everything she's learned about working with orchestras to your wedding day. Um, and wow, is she talented. So actually, Stephanie, let's, why don't we, why don't you introduce yourself and what you do? In yeah, um, so I'm Steph. Yeah, I have been playing the harp since I was about eight years old. Um, I think I was just a really difficult child and wanted to do something really challenging. I wanted to push my parents. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, no, I just really loved it. I, I don't really know where I got the inspiration from, but I, yeah the harp I knew it from the start mum took me to see one and because I'd, I'd never seen one before either and um she's like is, is that what you want to play and I was like yeah that's it yeah that's the thing yeah oh my goodness <laughs> um, I'm actually just going through this with my eldest little girl at the moment she's seven and they're allowed to start a music lesson at the school and um yeah I'm definitely discouraging her from anything like a cello or a harp I have to say as beautiful as the music Why the is cello? <laughs> but it's, it's absolutely massive it's absolutely oh, massive. okay no it's the double bass that's huge the cello is oh. not too bad yeah but yeah definitely well, yeah. cello is lovely <laughs> well what we're going for is so we already had a piano so we started off with piano yeah um, you know, cost saving, etc. And um, if she's good, and she's actually showing real promise, then we've said that she can play the electric guitar because <laughs> we've decided that we're a rock family. If you can play the piano, you can play anything, really. I always yeah. say that, like, it, because the piano is really hard and you've got lots of harmony and melody, you know, you've got both hands, you're reading both staves of music, the same with the harp. Um, so when I go to other instruments, I'm like, oh, there's only one line that's so easy wow yeah <laughs> obviously, just... obviously it's not because those instruments have their own challenges but yeah um from that point of view I think if you can read music both staves and stuff it's great that's a really good start yeah so this is interesting because I'm not at all musical I did about well, actually I did three years of piano lessons as a child and didn't even make it to grade one but to my defence, we didn't have a piano at home. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, you yeah. wanted to practice. Yeah, yeah, bless you. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, mum and dad, for that. Um, I used to get in trouble every week for not practising. Um, <laughs> <laughs> back, back in the 80s. Building how it, how it <laughs> yeah. yeah, it did. It was at School of Hard Knocks, for sure, with my piano teacher. But, um, yeah, so, that, so you started at eight and... How do you know, like, because lots of children obviously start a musical instrument at that age. Was it like love at first play, or kind of how did it progress for you? Um, yeah, I just I ended up going for lessons. Luckily, there was a teacher who, um, she was from Cottingham, which is near Hull, near me, and um, she used to come back once a week to her parents and teach, um, and run a choir, which I also joined, um. So yeah, that was how I got lessons. It was, yeah, it was great. I was really fortunate because it is something where people do struggle to find harp teachers. Um, they're, they're few and far between, especially on the East Coast. 
Um, obviously, it's a Celtic instrument. So in Wales and Scotland and Ireland, it's quite popular, whereas obviously we, we don't have as many teachers this side. Um, but yeah, I managed to find one and that was it. I just, you know, we rented one for me to practice. And um, yeah, I just, I, I practiced it, which, you know, for most kids, that's like the telltale sign as to whether you you love it or not. Um, yeah. You know, if you if you're not picking up the instrument, you know, several times a week to practice, then they're probably not going to stick at it. And um, the same with anything, really. Yeah. So, so you took it a bit further, though. So you had your lessons at home as a child, and then is it? Did you go to the Royal College of Music? Is that correct? Um, I went to the Royal Northern College of Music in right, Manchester. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a strange one, really, because um, you have to audition. Um, so if you think in if you're going to university, you often apply for Q and um, UCAS, which is sort of a few months before you do your A levels. Whereas when you do auditions, it's usually November, December time of that school year. So um you have to actually start preparing your pieces maybe a year in advance of that. Wow. So I had to make that decision at the age of sort of 15, 16 as to whether I was going to go to music college or not, um, which is a really big decision I mean even before I picked my A-levels I was picking <laughs> like the next step um so yeah and I guess I you know I really loved music and I loved playing the harp and there wasn't really anything else for me that that matched that and um, maybe if academically I'd loved something then I might have gone for that but yeah that it just wasn't an option it, for me it was just always the harp and music um so yeah just went for it really um and I was, you know, I was really fortunate that I had a really good teacher that prepared me really well. And um, because I think it is quite difficult to get in, especially if you haven't mm. been to a music school or a private school. And, yeah. um, you know, I've, I've just had private tuition. That That's it. So, um, yeah, I was really fortunate to get in. Wow. And then the training really began, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm doing a master's now um, at the University of Hull and it's so different to music college and um, yeah. like it's I mean what I'm doing is a lot more exploratory I'm moving um, from classical into jazz and um, so I'm using it to really explore the genre and find the areas that I love and don't love and um, but yeah at music college it was sort of like four or five hours of practice a day sat in a practice room hammering out notes and learning pieces and yeah Wow. Is it hard on your fingers to be playing for that much yeah. time? Yeah. Yeah, you get like big calluses on your Ooh, fingers. Really? And it's really <laughs> gross. You used to have to, I used to have to sit and file down my fingers. Oh, so, yeah, no. it's really horrible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. get that now because I don't I don't play as much as I did when I was at music college. But um yeah, it yeah, it gets a bit <laughs> a bit grim. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like it. it sounds pretty intense. I think all these kind of specialist colleges are, but that's really, it kind of like separates the people who are serious or not about it, doesn't it? And and to go on to, to make a career in it, I think is amazing, really. Um, certainly, I've got huge admiration for it. So you then went, you, you then played for orchestras. How does it work? Being not musical at all, I don't really know kind of what, what sort of career path would look like in this. So, so what was your experience next or during music college? Um, yeah, so I think I left music college and I think you're so focused on doing your final recital um, that you don't, I guess you, you don't really think about afterwards. And maybe I should have prepared myself a bit more and been getting wedding gigs and stuff, but I, you know, like I didn't, I was really focused on that. Um, so when I came out of music college, it was kind of like, oh, my God, um, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so I actually got a job in marketing at the Bridgewater Hall in Manchester. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was working there for a while. I was already a steward there throughout my degree. Um, so I just sort of stepped into that. And um, that was a really good role. And I, I, I love that hall. And it, yeah, I love the people. And it's, it's an amazing place to be and work and you know, it's the home of the Halle and, yes, you know, Manchester Camerata play there, BBC Philharmonic play there. So um, I was really fortunate to have the opportunity to just watch concerts nearly every night and wow, also get yeah. paid as a steward, which is, you know, a really good thing and have really good seats as well. So, 
um, yeah, that was a really good place where, and I got to see some really amazing concerts, people like Nigel Kennedy and Chris Cornell played there. And so I had the opportunity to see all these really great artists. And it's amazing that all this experience and, and particularly at the marketing experience as well for your business, you must have built on that and taken that forward. It's funny how things kind of fall into place, isn't it? Like serendipitously, that then you can go on and build your future based on all these sort of combined experiences all together. Because definitely in your marketing, we had a little chat off camera. I think it's spot on for weddings and really nicely done. And um, sometimes with people who are creative in other ways it doesn't sort of flow through every aspect of the business but it definitely does with yours it's just beautiful presentation and everything that you you do and I know that when you turn up on a wedding day it'll be the same like everything will, you know you'd be dressed beautifully hair and makeup done kind of just blending into the loveliness of the setting um I think that's fab so tell us about the service then that you offer for wedding couples since we're here to talk about that yeah um so it's I'm pretty flexible in um, when they want me to play during the day. Um, I usually say like no more than 100 guests, really, um, because it's acoustic. So um, if people are talking, then you just won't, won't hear it. Um, but it is really special. Um, the harp has a beautiful resonance and warmth that you, you, know, you, you don't get from recordings. It, you no. don't, and you don't get it until you hear it. And I think that's one of the comments that I always get especially at wedding fairs when they hear me playing and they're like wow I never realized like a live instrument sounds like that and um, give us a little tinkle to... on the give us a little oh, yeah, tinkle yeah, on the yeah, harp. Yeah. I know it won't be the same because we're not yeah. live but oh wow there we have the harp mm -hmm. I definitely hear though like the depth of the note when you played what was that called is it called a gliss did you say yeah glissando yeah yeah oh glissando yeah, yeah we always say glisses of heart yeah I remember that from my <laughs> remember that from my early piano days <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah you could definitely feel the depth of the notes there I imagine you know live is so different any kind of live music is so different so back to the wedding so um can, so I know that you play across like sort of from the bride's entrance right through I guess into the wedding breakfast yeah um so sometimes I usually obviously play as guests are arriving and that's pretty standard so if you're getting like a ceremony package I would you know be in the ceremony room set up ready I make sure I get them really early and I'm in the room and I make sure it looks really nice and I'm in a good position um and so that I can hopefully see the bride as well when they come down which is really important and um mm -hmm. Yeah, I play as guests are arriving so that they just feel that it, it just feels special as soon as they walk in and they know that they're at a special ceremony that is with their friends. And um, yeah, I'll play a mixture of music, whatever the bride wants. Um, and yeah, they'll it'll just set the scene. It does make such a difference to atmosphere. It's it's You can't even measure the difference that sort of going into like a, a quiet sort of echoey ceremony room or church comparatively to going into a ceremony room or church where there is kind of fine music playing in the background and it it just softens the echoes and lifts the mood hugely doesn't it it's, it's just yeah and that yeah, feeling absolutely. it's like a it's like an anticipation feeling of kind of like a really high quality anticipation which is just I love weddings so it's it's, it's yeah. just that moment when you step and you think oh this is nice and it's just yeah, like, oh, it's different nice. and most mm -hmm. people haven't seen a harp ever so mm. you know actually seeing a harp it's you know it's a big instrument it's you know over six foot tall it's you know it's got beautiful paintings on it I'll try and show you a bit of a bit of the uh the soundboard here which um if my camera will reach see a little bit of it there yeah and um, you know, it's it's a gorgeous, beautifully handcrafted instrument that you know takes over a year to make, and wow. um, you know, and that that's that's what it is, and it's it's special, and you know, it's used so much in um, healthcare settings and with you know children with SCND needs, and you know, because it does calm people, um, yeah. yeah. So it's beautiful. Kind of sets the mood. Anyway, so yeah, back to the ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so back to weddings. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you 
<laughs> what song what 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 um song would you recommend then i know if you can do lots of different ones but for for a bride or, or a groom coming in their entrance what um what's really lovely to come down the aisle to um so um i always tell people are happy to arrange music and if they've got a special song and um, i'd always say something that has a strong melody at the chorus that's really really important because sometimes people might pick um something that's um, I guess like a lot of modern pop tunes don't necessarily have strong melodies in the same way. So people can't necessarily tell what the song sounds like. And also yeah. I'm trying to put maybe an electronic song onto the harp. Um, and again, that's, it, sometimes it works really well. And then there's other songs where it just doesn't really sound like it. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm always happy to, when I'm arranging music, to send recordings to people and say like, is, is this okay? Um, you know, are you happy with this? But I'd always say anything with a strong melody. Um, some of my favourites are, I'm trying to think, probably, it's really cliche, but I do really like A Thousand Years. I think it's oh, really yeah. nice. It is it is a really nice tune. Um, and there's other things. I'm trying to think of what else I do that's been really nice. I was talking with Ray of Ray's Piano, who's one of our Unbound Network members as well. And he said that Thousand Years by Christina Perry is his most requested uh, bridal yeah. entrance song, which is just beautiful, isn't it? It's just very sort of mood, mood, mood setting, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And it's just obviously the lyrics are really sort of meaningful. And um, yeah. yeah, I think another one that worked really well, funnily enough, was um, Waterfall by the Stone Roses. Oh um, yeah, because it's got the bum 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 bum, and it because that's so like I guess we goosebumps. Yeah, it's so iconic that like actually it really works, and if you know play it a bit slower and um yeah, obviously just the main bit, not sort of when it goes a bit sort of more into the guitar and the mm. heavier stuff. Obviously not that, but um yeah, for someone walking down the aisle, um yeah, it's actually really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's gorgeous. And then obviously you've got a full repertoire. So tell us about your repertoire then that you can be exploring with the couple for sort of like um for drinks receptions or other music during the wedding breakfast so what does it like it's vast isn't it yeah um so I think for me obviously I've got a huge amount of classical repertoire because that's what I studied um, and I have quite a lot of traditional folk stuff but I don't really advertise that as much and the main stuff is pop music and um, so it's like a lot of Ed Sheeran and um, Elton John, Ellie Goulding and um, you know you really popular people who sing love songs um, yeah. yeah, I've got lots of lots of love songs um, I've got some opera stuff as well which is really nice and um, really beautiful like really popular tunes that people <laughs> don't realize they know but do um, yeah so I just sort of talk to the couples and see what they like and I guess also they can see my repertoire before they book me um, and it's something that I do discuss with them and they usually have songs in mind anyway and I've already seen yeah. them on the list or there's something similar and they say oh can you arrange this song and I'm like yeah of course um so yeah they tend to be happy with what I already have which is really good and I, I guess um I've built my repertoire from what people ask for um, and yeah. so it's representative of the people that are coming to me definitely I mean I feel like a certain couple would go for the harp and then they are the prob they're probably quite a romantic couple, kind of like a, a you know, like a classical, elegant feel. So then they are gonna like the sort of music on that repertoire, aren't they? It's almost like a natural fit. I love though that you can put together a bespoke playlist. That's like the beauty of live music, isn't it? Yeah. It's really Yeah, nice. I think there's like there's uh, sometimes it worries me like um I think there's there's also limitations to that and um you know because obviously I'm not Spotify um you know <laughs> I, like I have to you know it takes time to arrange music and it takes time to make it sound really nice and um you know especially if something's quite a complex tune that has loads of production around it um, I'm trying to find bits within that 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 sounds I like yeah. you know the iconic bits and and or sometimes I just have to move totally away from that and write something that's totally different um, because actually I just can't recreate it in any sense. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that's it's so amazing to hear the mechanics behind it. I totally sympathize with you because because of the nature of what I do with it being online and everyone expects everything online to be instant. I have to often be like, I'm not a robot. You know, yeah. these things, you have to put them into place. You have to spend time tweaking and twiddling and writing HTML. And it's, it's that side of things, like your arrangement side, that I think people don't appreciate. I didn't really get it either, I'll be honest. So I think, oh, you know, she played a harp, you know, she could pick a piece of music and da 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 which is true to a degree, but for it to be really special, you do need to put in the time preparing it. And that's the difference, isn't it? And that's where, you know, that's also the difference between live music and a recording too, and where you're getting the value. Absolutely, for sure. So, okay, then, what are your favourite songs to play? What are, what are your very favourites? Pop um, ones, I guess, if you go if you go yeah. down that kind of, like, contemporary route. So, more recently, like, obviously, with the lockdown and stuff, I had more time to go back through some of my arrangements that um, I did maybe a few years ago, and, like, I've got a bit more experience now, and I had more time on my hands, and I thought, oh, I'm going to redo some of these, Um so yeah, I redid A Thousand Years and I think that sounds so much nicer and um, I've added some like faster sections that sound really pretty um, and then I did um, Ed Sheeran Perfect because that's mm. another really popular one yeah. um, and it has got a really nice melody and um, so I redid that and that sounds really beautiful now so I really like playing that um, I did um, take that greatest day and rule the world and I redid those and they they sound really beautiful um so yeah they're, they're some of my, like my favorites I think because they're like sort of any four chords usually and mm -hmm. um, and even though maybe they're more musically basic um I love playing them because I can really relax into playing them and I yeah. can add bits in and change it as I'm performing which um I really enjoy having that freedom to do that and you know, obviously you have to set, like, feed off the room. So if it's yeah. quite a romantic atmosphere and there's a fast section in something, I, I don't really want to be playing, like, heavy, fast chords. I might want to take some of the notes out and make it a bit lighter and, yeah, so. I think that tip to read the room is so important for any wedding supplier. That's one of my top three tips I ever give to people. I was actually asked for top three tips the other day and I, that was one of my top three tips was read the room. Yeah. Because I think as a, and that's why the kind of top class wedding suppliers can do that, whether it's music, whether it's catering or, you know, whatever they're providing on the day photographer. It's about kind of working so that the wedding couple get the best of you for their needs. And I think that's, that's super important. I mean, do you do requests throughout the day or do you kind of try and stay away from um, that? I, I'd like, I try and stay away from it if I can. Um, but like, I guess if someone asks me for a song and I have it or I have something similar, then I'm, I'm happy to, you know, play that. Um, I quite often, if, especially if there's children at the wedding, I might like oh. play like Frozen or, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. Aladdin or something like that, which, you know, I really, I enjoy doing that. That's really nice. Um, you know, and I'll let them come and have a go on the harp and, you know, they'll, they'll get to play. And for them, that's a really special experience as well. Um, so like, I am happy to take some requests, but it's like, again, I'm not Spotify. Like I can't, you know, no. if, if I don't even know the song, I can't even like imagine the melody to then play it. So, no, um, yeah, I bet the adults yeah. in the room love those Disney classics just as much as the children, to be honest. Yeah, and like old Disney is so beautiful. Like oh, some yeah. of those melodies, like Love is a Song, anything from like Snow White or Cinderella is just really beautiful. Um, so I really enjoy playing old Disney. Um, yeah, no, they're really nice. Yeah, it's so gorgeous. I'm a big Disney fan at this end. So, um, Steph, where are you based and how far do you travel? I'm based in Hull in the East Riding of Yorkshire. Um, I happily travel to um, everywhere in Yorkshire. So that's North Yorkshire, East Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, West Yorkshire. Um, I do most of Lincolnshire as well. I travel down to about Cambridge, but not much further than that. Wow, um, that's quite a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and sort of. Uh, I'll happily do sort of East Lancashire. I think it depends um, sometimes on um, the day. Um, obviously, when it's sort of a main Saturday, I might not 
travel as far because I know that I'll get someone closer. Um, but if it's midweek, um, sometimes I think, well, actually, I, that's it's worth me traveling because obviously you have to balance up my other work as well yes. and and my own limits of driving and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yes. Because I know you do some teaching and orchestral work and you've got all sorts of music going on, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of it's about balance. It's like I might be I might be available on that day, but actually I maybe don't want to take a gig on that day because, um, you know, I need a day off that week. Or, well, exactly. And negotiate is like finding days and picking specific days to have time off and making sure that I stick to those and yeah definitely because it would be easy I, I, I think you'll be in high demand and I think it'd be easy to get very very busy particularly in the years to come definitely because we've got some busy years coming up now hopefully yeah um, so <laughs> Steph, what's your web address and I'll drop it here for everybody if they want to get in touch yep so it's my business name so it's www.stephanieharpist.com your alter then- ego yeah my old ego and I'm on Instagram and Facebook and what's your Instagram and they're all Stephanie Harpist as well um perfect so that's the marketing background coming out keeping it simple (laughs) there (laughs) yeah so Stephanie it's been amazing chatting to you thank you so much Um, thank you so much for your time and uh, I'll speak to you soon bye